This e-lecture is a direct continuation of Types of Language Change 1, where we discuss the principles of phonological and morphological changes. So the focus in this e-lecture will be set on syntactic and lexical changes, that is, changes in the vocabulary. So to find out about the phonological and morphological changes, we recommend you to view Types of Language Change 1. So, let's start with syntactic changes. Right. Syntactic change is primarily associated with the change of word order. In this context, it seems reasonable to assume that general processes are at work when a language changes its basic structure. It is often referred to as syntactic reinterpretation. And in many cases, a change of word order is initiated by a process of topicalization, which is the fronting of topical elements. I have a nice example here from rock music, Metallica, but don't get carried away. Oh, I could listen for ages, but we have to work on syntactic change. And here you see in the line trust I seek, we have object fronting, which is a very exceptional structure in present day English, but it exists. And this principle of topicalization was relatively widespread in Middle English. Let us look at two examples here. The first is they slain here children, which means they killed their children. And in this sentence, we have the verb in the second position, just like in the second sentence. Me dream it that I was led to Durham. I dreamed that I was led to the city of Durham. So the verb is second. And the subject is in the first position. Well, in the first sentence, it is simply a subject mark pronoun. But in the second, well, it is not the subject. It is the topic. But we have to interpret this as the subject and so this is what we're doing. We take the first element, the subject, even though in sentence number two, it is not the true subject. I see. To bring the word order of constructions such as example two into line with the majority of the other sentences, the topic in such constructions is fronted. Okay. Me became I, so the result was I dreamed that. Okay, just like in these constructions, here we have two further Middle English constructions where the subject is me, well it is not really the subject, it's a topic, but it was reinterpreted as the subject in present day English where me thristed sara, which means literally me thirsted very, which came out as I am thirsty, and me liked the peran, me liked pears, became I like pears. Well this process is empirically quite well supported, and uh, it looks as if syntactic changes start in some sort of, in a relatively limited domain and then extend to more general patterns of the language. So I think we could generalize the situation and incorporate some further data, namely from our mother tongue, German. Right. According to the German linguist Theo Wennemann, who was born in 1937, languages that are in the process of changing their basic word order are referred to as being in a state of drift. This drift can be defined in terms of a cycle where a language changes its basic word order by means of a fixed sequence from SOV to SVO to VSO and so on. Yeah, so we have SOV here, SVO and then VSO and back again. Right. So here's the cycle and what about this? Well this is now the extra stage which we insert, which some languages use because they have this special topicalization phase, like Middle English, where you have an intermediate phase, the TV X phase. 
um, where the topic is either the subject or any other element and x is the rest and by an anal analogical change you then simply uh, turn t into the subject and x into the object yes here are also some more examples of impersonal constructions that still occur in modern German the first one is mich friert is which is in English me freezes it and it became ich friere or I freeze in English and the second example is mich freut es or me likes it in English and it became ich freue mich so I like it okay oh, so these are impersonal constructions in German exactly all right so this is then literal we have to be careful this is no standard English of course not at all well so much for syntax let us now look at some lexical changes well lexical change that is change that concerns the vocabulary of a language is perhaps the most obvious change that you register when you look at linguistic change and many people are very much fascinated by this type of change it is profoundly connected with life culture sociology literature well everything that has to do with the language community what would you say are the most obvious types of lexical change well there are two basic principles which are involved first of all the arrival of new words and mm -hmm. second the loss of already existing lexemes but these types of changes can be subdivided further into widening, narrowing, shift and figurative use. Okay, let's start with widening. Well, widening is uh, if a lexeme acquires additional meanings while still retaining the old one. In Old English we had brid, which meant bird, it, in fact it meant young bird, and the general term for bird was furl. Foul. During the Middle English period, both merged and became foul of any age. Okay, the next one is narrowing, the opposite of widening. Our example here comes from Old English, where meter meant food in general. Today, we have two terms, we have food and meat, and of course you know that these two words are different today. Well, another change is okay. the shift. It means that one lexeme completely loses its original meaning and acquires a new meaning. An example is the Middle English word boy. And when it was adapted into Middle English, the Old English form Knicht shifted its earlier meaning of boy or male youth to the more narrow meaning of youthful gentleman soldier. And our last example is that of figurative use, which means that the meaning of a lexeme is based on analogy or likeness between things. And an example is the word crane, which has on the one hand the biological sense, and on the other hand it denotes a certain vehicle. Go Let ahead. us summarize. Okay. Well, having defined the central principles of language change, phonology, morphology, in our first part of this uh, two-part e-lecture, and then syntactic and lexical change in this e-lecture, a central question is why? Why do languages change? Well, linguistic change does not operate in an across-the-board fashion. Some speakers introduce the change before others and the change gradually spreads through a language. With regard to lexical change, this is called lexical diffusion. And this is how language change seems to work. First, only a few people use the change sporadically in a few words and constructions in their local variety. And then a large number of words and constructions are affected and eventually the entire language. Hmm. To see how these and other reasons for language change interact, we recommend you to view our e-lecture, Reasons for Language Change. Until then.